Hello class, this is Professor Jane Williams, College of San Mateo, Sociology 105, Contemporary Social Issues, and I want to talk to you about Chapter 12, Urbanization and Population. This is an interesting chapter, really interesting. Now they cover a lot of things about how cities got started and cities in the future and which cities and what kind of cities actually end up with the most problems, how they, they compare our cities to the cities in Europe, you know, I think a good comparison, what they do better than we do, what we do that might be a little better than what they do. Interesting chapter, but I'm going to talk to you mostly right now about one part that does get some attention in this chapter, but from my point of view, not enough. And here it is. It's slums, all right? How many slums are there in the United States? Don't give me a number because that's not really what I'm looking for. Here's the thing. Almost every major city in this country has a slum, a rundown area um, in the city, most often, you know, I'm saying that as opposed to in the rural areas, okay, in the city that's run down and there's poor people and the buildings are falling down and the streets look horrible. There's graffiti everywhere and the crime is high. And I ask you this, why? Why is that there? Why is it necessary? Why is it even possible? Every city has codes that say that a building, a landlord, property owners have to live up to. And why is it that they live up to all those codes in all the other neighborhoods, but not these particular slum neighborhoods? They don't. And who lets them get away with that? Here's another question to think about. Why is it that when the slums are all run down and there's all this crime going on and everything in the slums, we blame the people living there when, and give this some thought, they don't own those homes. People in rundown neighborhoods, in ghettos and slums, they tend to be renters, not homeowners. The homeowners are middle class and upper class people like you and I or your, your families. And so I ask you, why do we let them, the owners of these properties, get away with not keeping their properties up? Why do we let them get away with overcrowding? Why do we let them get away with um, renting properties where there's not sufficient parking, where they don't clean the streets or sweep them, the sidewalks and sweep them? That's their responsibility as owners. We've gotten our country so used to blaming the people who live there instead of the people who own it and have the responsibility that we've actually shifted the blame to the people who really don't deserve the blame at all. Why is that though? Is that because we're too um, scared and nervous to blame ourselves, which that is to say the middle class and upper class people. We don't want to blame ourselves, so we point the finger elsewhere. I'll tell you something else. There are more police per capita running around in a slum than any other neighborhood in the city. And you can name any city. They're all the same. And this sounds a little harsh, but if you look down a street that says Martin Luther King Drive, you're probably in the lower end of the... Um, neighborhoods in terms of the cities, right? And that street will probably be run down. It'll probably have a lot of homeless people on it and people who are in need of services on it. It'll probably have a lot of property rentals that are not kept up. And back to my original point, the number of police per capita, per number of people there, and by the way, these places tend to be very crowded, um, is much higher than elsewhere. But at the same time, so's the crime and the drug dealings and things like that. If all those police are there, how is it that the crime is so high? Hmm. Sounds like maybe certain people either aren't doing their jobs or don't have the tools they need to do their jobs well. When it comes to those property codes and neighborhood codes that the city is supposed to enforce, maybe they're not doing such a good job. When it comes to cars parked on the streets that are left vacant and run down and not being moved day after day and week after week. It seems like um, the, the transportation department aren't doing their job very well. Gee, there's a lot of people who need to do their job poorly in order for a slum to exist. It seems that landlords 
who oftentimes do not live there, believe you me, they live somewhere else, and they will keep their neighborhood where they live nice, and if things go wrong, boy, they'll jump right on it and they'll fix it. But if things go wrong in the um, depressed part of town where people, um, oftentimes people who are low income and people of color live, they don't do a thing about it. They don't do a thing about it. And, and everybody knows if you want to shirk your responsibility as a landlord, this is the place to go. I say that this is ridiculous. I think there should not be a slum in this country, and there particularly shouldn't be a slum in a um, county, say like San Mateo, yes, I'll say it, and um, many of the wealthy neighborhoods and counties in the, in the Bay Area, slums should not exist. It's just that there's a whole lot of people who one, don't want to do their jobs, two, want to come together in order to bring down the neighborhood so that they can create an atmosphere for certain people, yes, criminals and the like, to do what they need to do. You can challenge me on that. And you might want to say, if you could talk to me in person, you might want to say, um, how dare you say that? Um, how, how, um, how can you say those things about our officials and our elected people? And I say, then why does it happen? Then why does it happen? Where are you and I? And where are the people who are talking up against this? We give them the bad neighborhoods. We give them rundown housing. We do not police effectively. We do not keep it clean. We let people from well-to-do neighborhoods come down to the ghettos and the slums and dump their furniture on the sidewalk. And then the city lets it sit there for weeks and weeks before they clean it up, if they clean it up at all. And you and I are on our way to the mall or whatever. We drive by and we just shake our little heads and we go, that's just terrible. Those are terrible people there. They ought to be cleaner. And I'm thinking the city, the landowners, the, the landlords, um, people like that, they ought to be cleaner and they ought to be more resp responsible. And we, those, the voting public like you and I, we ought to do something about it to see to it that they do what they're supposed to do. Why do we let this happen? That's my point. That's my point. And you read through this in this chapter, chapter 12, please keep this in mind. It takes a whole lot of cooperation in order to build a slum. The wrong kind of cooperation, but cooperation. Everybody has to agree that they will do their job poorly and they will make sure that it reflects poorly, not on them, but on the people who live there. A little bit of a soapbox, but it's a strong one for me because I just don't get it. I don't see why we're putting up with this. I think we set an atmosphere for violence and danger and drug dealing and things of that nature. And for some reason, it benefits certain people. That's why we do it. Got a challenge for you. See what you can do to stop it.